Hi, my name is Jasmine Francoeur. I am a professor here at the DigiPen Institute of Technology. This is part three of a mini-series in which I am talking about how to animate and how to design avalanches. In the first lesson, we talked about making a static image and working with gesture. In the second, then we moved into motion and thinking in terms of 24 frames per second. And now we are going to take those drawings and clean them up and take them into full color production, composite with the background. Let's get started. So we're starting here, of course, with the background. As I'd mentioned before, you always have to think about what is the perspective that you are dealing with. Uh, in this case, it's very clear that there are uh, two very separated elements, actually three if you count the rock that is somewhere between the uh, edge of the glacier and then the foreground elements. And of course, then we begin with the avalanche coming in. Remember we talked about force and it being very similar to a cross between uh, waterfall language and smoke language. You could almost think of the two combined. And then we talked about collision, and we also talked about big, medium, and small shapes. So as you can see, as these shapes matriculate, they uh, begin to become more and more explosive as everything hits the surface. And I would say uh, working and visual effects is organizing chaos, learning how to turn chaotic shapes into something that can be simply colored. So again, you can now see the almost like an accordion, the shapes are beginning to bunch up. However, one of the things about animation is that you always have to think about progression. So it's not enough, and of course the scene in this case goes further than this, so the scene's not going to cut here. So the question is, is uh, who's the star of the show? What, what is the next most interesting thing? We have inattention blindness, the inability to see six or seven objects moving at the same time. That means that we can be like magicians with sleight of hand, and we can always fool people through misdirection. So now, if you look here, you can see that this new shape, this new snow splash, is the star of the show. And the other shapes become ancillary. Now they exit the screen, and then we end with something that's a bit more dramatic. So then if we shoot this, and we'll go here to animated MP4, you can see it move. And another amazing thing with the visual effects is once you add the sound effect, it gives it that much more impact. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, a reminder that this is just a glimpse into what we do. Uh, obviously, we're just scratching the surface because there are so many things that one can animate in the world or that one can design. Uh, and of course, there's many different silos, uh, each one representing different careers that one could pursue. So special topics courses like this uh, particular course that I teach would specifically speak to the theoretical that then students can apply to their games and to their films. Whether they're doing stop motion, whether they're doing a traditional film, whether they're doing a film with a game engine, or whether they're simply making a side-scrolling game or a 3D uh, game with a game engine. So the concepts are all very similar and they can all be applied. And hopefully you enjoyed the series and thanks for watching.